My name is Ando, and I'm an artist, a photographer, and a member of the Undergang. Every week, I sit down with an artist, a curator, a musician, an author, or anyone else working in the creative fields, and we talk about their work, their life, and what it takes to keep fighting the good fight in our world today. Welcome to the Undergang Armchair. Hey gang, welcome back. Episode 20. Is that a milestone? I feel like it's kind of a milestone. It's uh, 20% of 100, right? I think 100 episodes, that's going to be exciting. But here we are at episode 20. It's a good one. We got Richard Coleman today. Talented artist, friendly man. Uh, Don't take no shit from nobody. I'm pretty sure. That's uh, That's the vibe I got. I'm still in Thailand right now, so I wonder how that's going for me, because this is obviously not me in Thailand recording this. So, uh, hey, Ando, I hope you're doing good there in Thailand, and uh, I hope you guys are doing good. So, there's not much, I don't know what's going on in town. Uh, Basically, there's a bunch of art shows. You can go see Richard's show. It's still up at V1 Gallery. You can go see a bunch of the other people we've had as guests on the show. Uh, just check back in the last few episodes and go check them out. There's also Carrie James Marshall at Charlottenburg. And, you know, you know the usual venues for finding out about what's going on about town. What else do we got here? Right, so we got Richard Coleman, and the theme of today's episode, aptly for episode number 20, is work fucking hard. That's what I got out of talking to him. It's true, people. Everything can be surmounted by hard work. I hate to say it, it's just the truth. You just gotta work your ass off. And you'll hear all about that in the interview coming up. Alright, enjoy the talk with Richard, and then go see the show at V1. Yes! Standing there and showing off your work at the end. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't like all the attention. No. No. Would you rather avoid it? Like be anonymous? No, not anonymous. Style. But it's uh, you know you get um, you spend most of your time by yourself, so it's a little overwhelming that when you do sort of get out of the studio or you know out, it's everything right all at once. <laughs> yeah. Just right in your face. Yeah. Where's but I sleep? like it. I like all my. I like talking to people, but yeah, you know, it takes uh, it takes a little while to to get used to to talking to people again. Do you uh, do you write too? I mean, do you like writing about your work at all, or is that just? Completely- I'm not. Um, some people are really good at that. You know what I mean? And I really like people who can, you know, people who can talk well about things. I don't. I don't talk well about it. You do it. Instead. I sort of fumble through. Right. What it is that I do, and uh, well, that's the funny thing at art school because art school is so all about the talking. Yeah, I wasn't good at that part. I was good at the working part, but right. not the uh, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, not the not the sort of. Uh, well, I mean, art school is so specific too. The way it works, like the whole scene, and the way like the critiques are run, and the way you have to defend your I mean, work constantly sort of it it depends like the 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 school i went to was very uh it was very non-traditional yeah in in that way there was no uh there was no uh structure to it um it was, was it like pass fail yeah. any course you wanted exactly you know, it's like you you know you didn't have to be like i'm a painting major i'm a you know sculpture major you were free to to take whatever interested you or whatever class you could you could get into and um, uh, what do you what do you call it at the end of each you know semester or trimester I forget how they did it but you'd have one critique and it was pass fail right um, there which, wasn't critiques under um, during the during the I mean there were but you weren't you weren't graded on right. that it was more just to it was. It was more helpful that way, you know what I mean? There wasn't the pressure of a grade. It was more like 
you know, a few, few times a month or whatever, a couple times a week, you know, you'd meet with, you know, your, you know, depending on the, on the class or whatever it was, you'd meet with the, the teacher and, and, you know, they just go over what it is you were working on, like what you're trying to do, you know, and we're really helpful, like how you can do that better, you know, right. maybe try this. Like it was, it sounds like all the good sides of art school, you know, and the immersive experience, you're just, yeah, yeah I, I, I think so. And, and I think it's, you know, it, it was a funny thing because it was, you know, me, I'm, I'm very sort of self-motivated. I work a lot. That's what I like to do. And there were a lot of other people like that at, at the school I went to, but then there's also the other people there who, you know, you didn't, there was no attendance. You didn't have to, like, you could essentially you could just fuck off. You could years. never attend a class and you could still pass because you did, you know, this amount of work or, you right. know, I see but that through. fucked, that fucked a lot of people up because especially, you know, like kids, like a lot of kids don't want to do shit. So if somebody tells them like, you don't have to do anything. They literally don't fucking do anything. And then they show up and it's like, you're spending all this, this or their so parents' money, their parents or whatever loans. Uh, like they're spending so much money, yeah. and it's like you didn't do anything. You just yeah. handed over all, all well, this money. I mean, I'll tell you, I I was. I mean, my school, the Art Institute of Chicago, did have attendance. Yeah, but you could easily bullshit your way through stuff. Yeah, and I was somewhere in the middle. You know, like I was too young for that shit. In reality, yeah. I should like. I feel like I'd use it a lot better now. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I mean, also, it's like, I, I feel pretty fortunate because I didn't go, I didn't go straight into, into school, you know, by the time I was finished with high school, I was so fucking sick of, you know, having to be here at this time and people telling me what to do, like, I just, you know, I finished school and I just, you know, I, I, I got a job, I went to, I went to work and mm -hmm. hung out and fucked off and, and did all that stuff for for a few years and didn't, you know, I didn't start college until, you know, I was probably 21, something like that. Right. And that's a big difference between being 19 and being 21. Yeah. Because by the time I showed up at, at school, I was, you know, I, I wanted to, to learn things. I wanted to, you know, it's like, I basically, you know, left high school and I was like, this shit sucks. Like mm -hmm. I want, I want something else. And, and, you know, even going to art school, like I never, I never really thought like, oh, like I'm going to be, I'm going to be an artist. Like I, I treated it more as a trade school. You know what I mean? It's like, I thought that I would end up, you know, doing, you know, illustration or, you know, something. Graphic design, some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, something, you know, something that, you know, I could, I could use. And it really wasn't until I was in, in school that, you know, I started getting interested in sort of the larger picture of, of sort of, of fine art, you know, it, it really wasn't until like I did, I did my first art shows when I was still in art school. And, you know, that was like, I think, you know, the first show I did, you know, whatever I made, like a couple hundred bucks, but I was like, holy shit. Well, like, that's free money. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like, I'm doing this anyway. And I can't believe like somebody is, you know, it was like, I can't believe anybody's giving me money to, to do this stuff. Like this is, this is a way, a way out of, you know, essentially just like a life of manual labor. <laughs> and the trucks at the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Or like we, you know, we were talking about like lugging, you know, lugging, you know, booze around bars and, and shit like that. <laughs> but you grew up in Maryland, right? Yeah, yeah, just outside of uh, Washington D.C. How was that? It was amazing. I mean, that I go back now. Occasionally, my family's you know they now live in Massachusetts. I don't really have much of a connection, much of a connection there anymore. But I go back to Washington D.C. and it's really like as an adult, like it's it's kind of boring. Like it's it's not you know it's not that interesting. A lot of but, government employees. And well, I mean there is, but I mean if you it's like anywhere else. If you're from there and you live there, there's you know there's the face of of the city, but there's the part that that nobody really really sees. Which fucking Fugazi, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's <laughs> you know as as a kid growing up in that city, it was. It was incredible. Like it was, you know, it was, it was almost, it, it, it felt like, um, 
it was almost like a playland or, or something like that. It's like you have like I remember, you know, we we go out, we'd be out all night, you know, drinking and and all that, like writing on people's shit and and all that stuff. And this is before, you know, they lot, you know, there was security everywhere, and it's right. like, you know, you you end the night and you're, you know. You're on the Lincoln Memorial, like sitting in his lap, like just laughing with your friends, like just you know, crazy. You can't shit. do that now. No, fuck no. But crazy shit like that, which yeah. is just like insane, you know, like <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like so, breaking breaking into like the you know the the uh, the National Cemetery and just like. Whoa. In there, like, oh, you know, around the eternal flame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, dumb fucking kid shit, but yeah. really kind of, like, unique and, and amazing. Yeah, the world may not exist anymore. We kind of use I mean, San Francisco but similarly. I, it's, we're also older, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what, you know, kids, like, teenagers and shit like that. I'm sure they're doing, you know, weird fucking crazy. They're, you know, that's what you do. Yeah. That's yeah, I guess you just find whatever can be exploited wherever you can get into. Yeah, you get it's into. like you know, you're you're. It's like everything's everything is is new. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you're sneaking out, like you're, yeah. you know, it's like you're just you're you're finding out who you are and all this stuff. And it was it was an it was a very sort of interesting interesting place to to do that. And you were close enough to the city that it was accessible. You know, it was your yeah. I lived. You know, it's like I lived five blocks from the border. Of, oh wow! Of okay, right DC. there. Yeah. So it's. I mean, essentially, it was. It's a suburb of of DC. Right. And high school was just some bullshit, or what? No, but it's. I, I don't think it was bullshit, but it's. I, I'm not good at. I was never. I was never good. Never good at at school. It's like my. I was always sort of, sort of somewhere else. Like it's not, my, my attention doesn't, doesn't work that way. Were you drawing and painting in high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And my, my background is, I guess, you know, I guess for, you know, I guess it would be, be graffiti at that, at that point. Right. Right. on people's stuff. Yeah. But uh, again, like that's, you know, it's a similar thing to just, you know, like I was saying, like this sort of, this sort of secret world, like you're doing. Yeah. You know, you're going places that people normally, uh, you know, and in, in, in those days, it's like, it, it's a little different now, but, you know, gra- graffiti really relied on, you know, maximum visibility and, and this sort of thing. It wasn't like, you know, you could just go wherever, paint something and, you know, take the picture and everybody will see it. It's like, you really, you know, you're doing a lot of like climbing up buildings yeah, yeah. and, you know, you're down alleyways and down train tracks. And, you know, when you're, when you're that age again, like it's, it's like this amazing sort of very private secret world. It's very exciting. Totally. Totally. I never did graffiti, but I did a lot of the building climbing, like pulling down fire yeah, escapes. Yeah. Yeah, put a it's rock the, on a piece of string and pulled on a fire escape. Exa- then, it's it's the same. It's the same same thing. It's yeah. like you know. It's it's it was it was a really. I, I'm very thankful for it because it 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 was a really it was a really good sort of outlet for all that sort of you know young sort of you know troublemaking uh, yeah. energy. Yeah. And uh, and 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 in, in a lot of ways, it's you know it's. I always, you know, I was always drawing and things like that, but I think, you know, that specifically that period of time is when most people stop, you know, cause little, your kids and, you know, everybody, you know, you draw things, you're creative and, you know, people hit, you know, sort of high school and then your priorities change. Right. But because of that, you know, I wasn't, again, it's like, I'm not trying to be, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to be an artist or, you know, there weren't street artists right, then right. and stuff. It was a way to sort of cause trouble and, and right, sort of out in that and have an adventure. But it happened to be, you know, it happened to involve being being creative. So it really sort of, you know, it bridges that that gap right. between, you know, being a kid and being an adult who that, you know, doing something creative. Totally. When did the like? How did that change from just being fun to being like, oh shit, I want to, I want to work, I want to go to art school, I want to, you know, I want to do, I want to continue doing this. I mean, the choice. You know, for for me, it's like I kind of, you know, I'll I'll still I'll still, you know, now it's as an as an older older man, 
I'll like, you know, I occasionally like I'll paint walls with friends and stuff like that, but it's, it's, it's a different thing. It's not, it's not being involved in that world for me. It's like, you know, I have a lot of friends and, and things like that from, from, from that, that scene or whatever. But, you know, now it's like how, you know, most guys my age, you know, they start, you know, playing golf or whatever. It's like, that's like, <laughs> you know, my, my version, my version of, of that. Right. And it, yeah, I think it, I think it really changed because, you know, when I, when I sort of made the decision that, you know, I wanted to go to art school and learn this stuff, it, it didn't, it didn't really feel right to me to sort of continue with, uh, with, with sort of, you know, actively pursuing graffiti because it felt like, you know, if you were going to, you know, Juilliard or something like that and, you know, but you're in a punk band, like it's right. not... It just wasn't the same, didn't, worlds didn't collide. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's, it's, it's different for everybody, but that's just sort of how, how I, I felt about it. I, I, I always saw it as this very sort of re- rebellious, um, you know, kind of, you know, crazy thing to do and it just, it didn't, you know, it's like the two worlds didn't, didn't feel like they meshed to me. Right. Yeah. But when did, like, how did the choice start for you to start uh, making, to, to, like, make the choice to go to art school? Where did that, where did that switch happen? It, it, it came, you know, like, like I said before, it's like I didn't, I didn't want to be working construction jobs and bar jobs. It was a practical and, choice, really. Yeah, it's like because I mean I wasn't I wasn't good with school. Like I've never I've never been been driven that way and and so it you know, for me it's like it, it was it was either the the choice to okay, I do I know I have a skill set so I can either pursue that or, you know, I can essentially just be doing unskilled labor forever for the rest of my life, right. which Die I wasn't. Die as a 55 year old alcoholic. I, well, I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in that. And it, for me, it's like all those, all the jobs I had, it was the, it was the same, the same thing at school. It's like with maybe one or two exceptions of, I got fired from every job I had. I just, I don't like people telling me what to do. Right. Right. I have the same thing. I don't, I don't really want to work for other people, you know, like yeah, yeah. at the end of the day and I have a good job now that I enjoy, but, yeah. but it's, I'm still working for someone else's cause. Yeah. And it's, I mean, and it is a scary thing to sort of take, you know, all of that on yourself. There's a lot, there's a lot of, res, you know, personal responsibility with, you know, working, working for yourself, especially in, in something like this, where there's no, there's no guarantees. Totally. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll spend, you know, I'll spend six months, I'll spend a year on a show and, you know, sometimes it, it goes really well and other times it does nothing. Right. Yeah. That's, that's why the myth of artists making tons of money, you know, they're like, oh, they sold all this work at the show, but you're like, yeah, that was once every two years. Exactly. If it's you're like, lucky, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, but it is, I mean, I feel, I feel very fortunate, you know, just to have this at all. I mean, there's the ebbs and flows of it, like sometimes it goes great, sometimes it doesn't go so great, but at the end of a day, at the end of the day, it's like, I have somewhere to put all that stuff. Right, the output goes somewhere. Yeah, it's like I have an outlet for for everything and I always will. That will always be there whether it's going good or it's going going poorly. It right. doesn't it doesn't matter. Right, which is good cuz who has the space? Yeah, and a, a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people don't have that, you know what I mean? Like they you know, they they took a safer route and they're not very happy about it. It does seem to happen. Yeah, it's like you kind of there's there's a there's a big sort of freedom in just saying fuck it, you know what I mean? Right. Come it come as it may, you know. Yeah, yeah. Bring it. I don't I don't give a shit. <laughs> so there was never any choice for you. You never were like, should I get a real job after you know you you finish art school, you get the world's most useless art degree or the most wor- useless degree. I was degree. already I was already showing art before I left. Shit just went. Moved forward. And yeah, it's it. like I mean, at at that point, you know, in the in the sort of late nineties, like there were a lot of a lot of you know graffiti guys that I knew that that were doing 
you know, they you know, small shit, but they they were doing they were doing art shows and stuff, and you know, I was you know, they'd ask me to do it, and I'd be like, yeah, why not? You know, I made a little, you know, a little bit of money, but it was like, okay, like, I can I can do this, right. you know what I mean? And you know, definitely for for a few you know de- a few years after that, like, of course, I still had to have bullshit jobs, but. Yeah, you know, whenever I wasn't at the bullshit job, I was working. I was constantly working, just around the clock, like hammering it out, like try. You know, and I didn't. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I definitely didn't know what I was doing then. It was like I didn't know. You know, I didn't know what was good, what was bad. It's like I was just producing. Right. Well, I mean, non-stop. that's that's kind of the key in a way. It's just to keep your fucking head down, and get get yeah, to work. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's. Uh, I still do that. You know what I mean? It's like, I still like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but it's, <laughs> it's working know. so far. Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's, you, you do it. How'd you, you know? get out to Frisco? Um, I went out there. I think you were living in Boston. Yeah. I was living Well, I finished, uh, I finished school in, uh, in Boston and, and what's the name of the school? I went to the the museum school there. Is it just called the Muse- the yeah, Art Institute of Boston? It's it's the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. Yeah, it's like the Boston. School of the Art Institute of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, in in DC they had the the Corcoran right, school right. there. So it's just the school that's affiliated with the right, with the museum. Right, right. Um, so you finished that, and you were I done finished with that, and it's like yeah, I, I stayed around Boston a little bit, but. I think, you know, I wasn't really sure where I was going to go at the time. You know, I had a lot of a lot of friends who were living in Philadelphia and at that point Philadelphia was extremely affordable. Right. You know, it didn't cost anything to live there, so I was thinking about that and you know, maybe maybe I'll move I'll move there and then uh at the time uh, one of my sisters, she was living in New York and, you know, she lost one one of her roommates and or her roommate and you know she needed somebody to live with so I was like ah fuck it I'll I'll go there and and, and live with her um so I did that and uh was in New York just not long you know just a, just a few few years and um didn't really take well I mean it did you know you know I like I like New York but you know I was really you know I was you know I was broke you know what I mean like I didn't I didn't have a lot of money and you know all that sort of thing but at this time I was doing more and more, you know, sort of art shows and that sort of thing. And and the majority of them at that time, anyway, were taking place in California. Mm, So so the scene, like just the way, the places you could work. Well, I mean, it just, uh, you know, it just, you know, it's, 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 I like to, you know, see new places go, you know, go check things out. And it's like, well, I'm doing I'm doing all this shit. Like, I'll I'll check out California. Like, I've I've been there. I've never really lived there, but I'll give that a shot. So I went out to Los Angeles in you know maybe 2003 or four maybe, um, and uh, I was there for you know a year and a half, two years, and then uh, you know I met my uh, my fiance during during that period, and she lived in San Francisco. Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, it was sort of, you know, we'd sort of been going back and forth to see each other and it was, you know, we, we were, it was basically like, you know, like she could move to Los Angeles or maybe I'd move to, as things got more serious, you know, she'd move to Los Angeles or I'd move to San Francisco. And again, it's like, I just kind of like, you know being different places and experiencing, you know, new places and stuff. And I didn't have, you know, I have, I still have a lot, you know, good friends and and things in in Los Angeles, but I was like, well, I haven't, I haven't lived in San Francisco. I'll move to, move to San Francisco. And that was 10 years ago or something. Yeah. At this point, yeah, it was not, not 10 years ago, but close. It's wild. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Well, it's California. I'm sure. Well, maybe you don't know because you're, you're from there, but it destroys your long-term sense of time. Yeah, it's kind of true. You know, there's you don't get the changes in seasons, so it's like, you know, people, 
you know, it's like you're telling you, it's like you've been there 10 years and it's like, I honestly, like I have to do the math right? because I don't know. Like people ask me how, you know, well, how long have you been in, you know, in California? And I'm like, oh, at this point it must be three or four years now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just because uh, there's no seasons. I don't know. There's no seasons. There's no rhythm to daily life either in a way I mean, it is kind of. Yeah. it's like, Well, yeah. And also, you know, it's like I, I work for myself. It's like I don't have like a week. It's like I work seven days a week. I work, you know, 20 hours a day right, like all the time. It's like. I real like, you know, figuring out like simple things like what time it is, what day it is, like what, <laughs> w- you know, where we are, you know, what month it is. Like right. I have to think about all those things because I don't know, like I'm right. not in the, <laughs> oh, that's the dream though, you know? Sometimes the oppression of time, man. <laughs> it's very San Francisco. Well, it feel, I mean, it. I don't. It, it feels like it's. You know, sometimes it's scary. I'm like, where is where is all this time going? I don't know where it's going. It's going into your works. Uh, yeah, guess. yeah. They're yeah. They're doing fine. I'm a mess. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. <laughs> what? Um, so I mean, obviously, you like San Francisco to some degree. I mean, you've been there. Yeah, I love it. It's. It's. I mean. It was, before I lived in San Francisco, I could give a fuck about, you know, nature or anything like that. And, and really it's like, you know, moving, moving there to, to a place where you're, you're really, you're surrounded by like Jurassic nature. Like it's It's so so fucking nice. And it, it's, you feel so insignificant but not in a bad way like in a very like you feel you feel a part of everything but like just this little little part and it yeah it it it, it, i was awestruck by it like i i immediately was like there's there's no place there's no place like this anywhere in the world it's it's insane right the fact that the entire area is built around this bay yeah. You know, and structured by like the bridges going across at different short points. There's mountains. There's flatlands. There's like <laughs> yeah, everything yeah, is just yeah. modulated around the landscape. Yeah, it's 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 unique. You know what I mean? And it's 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 really you know people you know always ask you know the fucking stupid questions like what inspires you like whatever like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's like but not like you know. San Francisco inspires my work, but it is very, just in general, it's a very inspiring. Yeah, I mean, I guess it goes beyond inspiring. It's like it's fuel or something. Like it, 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 it provides an energy which you can tap yeah. into and then yeah. keep going. Yeah, definitely. So what inspires you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it's a, that like, it is a bullshit question. Well, it, I, I understand people, you know, people asking it, it's like that they, they want to know, but you know, it's like when you, you know, when you, you know, do, do things like this and when you've been doing them for, for a long time, it's, it's not even a question of that. It's like, you're constantly processing all the information that you're taking in. So when it, when it comes time to, to do a show or to, you know, make, make pieces, it's, it's really not about searching out any kind of inspiration. It's, it's really more about editing Mm -hmm. because there is too much information. Exactly. It's like, there's, you're, you're filled with, you know, it's like I start to do a show and, and it's like, I want to do every show that's in my head, at once. At once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's it's really like it's it's about like you just start working and where it's going, you just sort of have to trust and right. and sort of, you know, it 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 becomes more refined and more more focused, but it's like you need to like weed through all of the the sort of garbage information. Right, and just know when to wait on stuff too. You know, like this idea of maybe good, but it's not ready or it's just well, not. Well, it's like when, here. yeah, when, when you're ready to do it, like you're ready to do it. You know, it's, it's, you know, and sometimes it's, it's, it's more difficult than others to, to sort of get to that point. I mean, you know, it's in, in order to, to make a living at this, it's, it's, you're working constantly. You know what I mean? It's like, 
you know, if you were a musician or something like that, you know, you know, you release an album every couple of years with this, it's like you're releasing a new album every three to six months. Right. You know, and, you know, you do it. <laughs> right. And nothing's better than the one you just did. You know, it's well, always. Well, yeah. And it's, but it's just like, that's a, it's, it's intense. It's intense to have to, 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 to do that. Is it too much sometimes? Do you feel stressed? I could, I mean, I definitely, I mean, you know, everybody, everybody gets, gets stressed and sometimes it's more difficult than others. Definitely. Yeah. You know, you get, get stressed, but I would never, I mean, I'm a lifer. I'm not, I'm not doing anything else but this. I wouldn't want to do anything else but, but this, even when, you know, it's, it's killing me. Like it's, it's not working. I'm, you know, right. Well, the alternative definitely, you know, for people, I'll be so romantic as to say us, you know, it's, it's like there, you know, hopefully it works. You put in, you're there to do it and hopefully you can do it, but you may have to work at a bar the rest of your life too, but you're still going to do it regardless yeah, exactly. of whether you can like sell it. Like it doesn't, or, you know, it's, you can sort of, you know, talk about like this and that, and this is hard and, and, and this is easy and, and all that. But really, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, you know, everybody does that. That's just talk. At the end of the day, you just, you do what I, I, I feel very, very privileged to, I feel like I, I have my place. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that. It's, it's a strong position to come from. Exactly. It's like I feel at its worst, like when it's, you know, at, at my worst with, you know, making things, it's, I still feel, you know, I may be stressed or whatever, but I still feel very fortunate because mm. I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and that's crazy. That's right. That's insane. That it's I pretty can, rare if you think about it. If yeah. you break things down. You know, to have the ability to do that. Yeah, it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing and a very sort of privileged place to be. But, I mean, that goes back to the hard work. You know, I imagine there's a lot of people listening who are also attempting to be artists, trying to build up practice, whatever it is they you do. just work. That's Fucking it. work. That's the key, you know, and I saw so much of that in art school and I'm self, I'm myself, I'm guilty of it. You know, I just saw so much of that, that like, you just, you know, you can talk all you want, you can read all you want, you can write all you want, but you actually have to work. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's yeah. it. You can, you know, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter, you know, none of it, you know, it doesn't matter what other people say. Right. Like, at the end of the day, like, you know, you work, and, and that's what I do, and that's what I'm happy doing, and that's all I want to do. So, kind of back to the editing idea, do you... How how much thinking through are you doing, or is it more just like a lot? It's, forcing it's, it's 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 taxing. It doesn't. It's not like you know some some days are easier than others. Some days it does just like you get hit with it and it's there. You know what you're doing, and that's great. But you know it's it a lot of a lot of thought goes into to everything. I mean. For me, it's it's that thing. It's like at the end, it's like, yeah, you want it to look easy. You want it to look effortless. Yeah, and but you know, each decision that's made is thought about. Nothing is random. Right. You know, it's like if I'm using, you know, let's say I'm using a certain color green. It's like, yeah, I may get the green that I'm using right in the first shot, but a lot of times it's it's like. It's a little too dark. It's a little too blue. It's a little too light. And a lot of thought has to go into... What is the right green? Exactly. To get what I want. Right. And That's... I think that it's it's that way with everybody. Whether they're... You know, my, my work tends to be fairly controlled. At least, you know, it's presented in a, a, a very controlled... The finished product looks very controlled, but... Yeah. And I think it's it's that way whether you're 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 working very you know expressively or loose like a lot of thought has to go into what's done. Right. Do you are you like mapping things out beforehand for your works because they are like you say very controlled. It depends. Very tight. It, it it really depends. Some of them some of them get fully mapped out beforehand. Some don't get mapped out at all. Happened. Some colors just get laid down first. It's like. 
it's funny because the 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 end result of what I do it looks it looks fairly rigid and fairly you know controlled like that but the process of getting to that point is actually I do it a lot of different ways mm. to get there. So there's layers built up on top of each other to reach. Well, the and it's, I mean, it's just like, it, again, it's like there's a variety of ways that, that I approach it. You know, it's like maybe I approach it very loosely with just color, you know, at first, or maybe I draw the entire thing out first, yeah. or maybe, you know, I sort of do it in pieces or, Sometimes it's like I'll work on nothing but one painting alone for for weeks, and other times I'll have you know twenty different paintings going at the same the same time. Right. So you know, it's really yeah. It's like I I like to keep myself open to however it's gonna it's gonna work. You know, it's you know I I try not to sort of you know stay rigid and closed in what I do. It's like, it's more just let it all in and, and the way it's going to work is the way it's going to work. Right. What about the cast of characters? You seem to have like a, a reoccurring, I don't want to say there's I specific mean, people, but there's like, I think, I think like, it's, it's funny because I know a lot of other people who actually, you know, who, who I've worked with and stuff and they, they actually do have a very set, Amount, you know, there's, you know, a handful of different devices that they use and they just combine them in different ways or, or pat, you know, do whatever differently. And it's like, I don't really, I don't necessarily feel like I have like just a set cast of characters, but it's, I think it's because the way that I approach figures is I treat them you know, they're, they're almost static. I try to make them no, you know, I don't want them to be expressive. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I treat them very, uh, what's the word? Um, anyway, uh, I know what you mean that they're very, they they kind of represent a a primal image of a person or a bear or something like they don't, they don't have a, they're, it's like, I, I I treat them more like when I, when I'm working on, it's like, it's like structuring a paragraph or Mm. a sentence. It's like they, they're, they, they're more, you know, it's more like, you know, a, a, uh, it's almost like an alphabet of, Mm. of different, different sort of, you know, elements and, and, and things and things like that. But I do that. My, my thought is, is that, you know, once, once you present something to the public or whatever, like once you put it on display, whatever it is belongs to the person who's looking at it. Mm. So I don't want to dictate what that person's experience is. So I leave everything as blank as I possibly... It's neutral in a way. Exactly. I keep... That was the word I was looking for, is that I try to keep each... You know, I try to keep the figures very, very neutral. Right. Because I don't want to... It's like I have my experience with the work, and that's mine. Right. It will always be mine, and I feel that anyone who's looking at it the same goes for them, and I don't want to dictate their experience at all. Right, it makes perfect sense, you know. And 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 to be quite honest, it's um, I'm always I'm always shocked that you know people you know they want to talk to me about it and they want to tell me what you know they think it represents or what it means to them. And more often than not, it's it's very very close to what hmm. to what I think. All right, well, here I come then. <laughs> okay. My, what I see is a pretty heavy reference to religious painting. And I don't mean that in terms of like there's symbols of religion, but I mean that in terms of setup, control, neutral symbols, uh, symbology coming exactly. through forms. I mean, but that's a, but it's, again, it's like I, when I first started making work, it, work it it looked more more like that but i was drawn to yeah, again it's like those the figures are very sort of neutral right you know they're you know and it's like people talk you know 
that I make references to, uh, you know, Egyptian, Greek, or things like that. But again, it's the same thing. It's a it's a visual language. What's happening is is it's not, you know, it's not, you know, there's no real emotion. It's it's right. Well, the people and the figures become vessels for something else. Exactly. It's, in a way. And it's not that there's a specific meaning behind it, but they are containers for something. They're not what they're not themselves. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not about like, you know, this is an angry guy like it's not about that. Right. <laughs> for me. Right. Maybe the artist is angry, but <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it seems to me like uh yeah, it seems to me like the new work is 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 a departure from from your other works. You're a lot more colors, big forms. Well, it's a, it it you know how often are you looking at it? You know what I mean? It's like sure. for me, it's like it's a very sort of no matter what I'm doing, it's it's seamless. You know what I mean? It's sure. like I'm surrounded by this shit all day. Yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, for example, if you look at your website versus the blog, right? The blog is more updated. It's more like <laughs> yeah, things yeah. happening. You know, the website is more. I'm bad because I'm bad at updating. <laughs> well, I mean, for Christ's sake, you're not supposed to be there like fucking updating your website all the time. <laughs> yeah, but that's where like, you can see this difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's well, that's fine. That's great. I mean, and 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 I have to say, it's like when I when I first when I first got interested in you know, sort of, you know, fine art, I guess. What, what I was really drawn to was, you know, I was, you know, you look at a lot of books and, and you're getting, you know, you're getting a retrospective picture of, you know, someone's basically their entire life. Right. And, you know, I was really drawn to say artists like, you know, like Philip Gustin, where there's a huge, huge range of the type of work that, that he did. And, and, and that was, that was very attractive to me. So I've never, I've never wanted to be, you know, the type of artist who here's the thing that I do. And I'm just doing that a different, you know, I'm just doing that right. same tweak one thing. And then yeah, I'm just doing word. the same thing again and again. And, and, and I think, you know, it, it, I'm I'm fine with that. I don't have any problems with it. But for for me personally, it's you know, over the years, I've known you know a lot of people, and and some of them, you know, you know they they they've done that, and it hasn't made them very happy. Right. They they want to do other things, but they feel like they can't. And again, it's like I I don't want to feel like I have to do anything. Right. Well, again, that's setting the standard from the beginning kind of thing. You yeah, know? it's like even, you know, I started my first shows like sort of within the graffiti realm, but I never wanted to use, say, my graffiti name because then you're stuck with that. You right. have to, and you you're have a to do that. you artist, quote unquote. Yeah, it's like, and I don't, I don't want to make things that, you know, are successful necessarily because of, you know, you know, where I come from or that sort of thing. It's like, I want the work to be successful because the work is successful. What I'm making is, is, is working. Right. So it's more of a timeline, really. You have a starting point and things just go forward. You know, whatever you made five years ago is then and whatever you make now is now. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to get in the way of that. I mean, I think, you know, it's, I feel like, you know, I am consciously, you know, Want you know moving you know progressing you right know, and 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 sort of finding finding new things and and things like that is it's it's important to me. Well, that's what it comes back to too is this editing process again and this thoughtfulness. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've done I've done shows also that you know they don't look anything like any of this. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you know people may not talk about them because you know they they're like they want to see something they recognize a little more, but you know, I've done, I've done shows that are completely, you know, they, they, they've got nothing to do with this, this right. kind of stuff. And, you know, sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not, but it's, you know, that's, that's what I want to be doing. You know, it's not, are you, are you really actively involved with other artists and other artists works? Are you, are you, are you more in, into your own world with working, or are you also out there looking at what's going on all the time? It depends. I mean, if I have uh, 
if I'm actively, you know, focused on a show and working on a show, I don't look at a lot of art. It, I find it distracting. Mm. But if, you know, I have more free time and that sort of thing, it's one of my favorite things to do is, is, is look at other, other people's art. And, and, you know, I've, I collect a lot of art and yeah, I love it. But if I'm, you know, if I'm in it, it's like it, it can be it can be distracting. Right, you got to stay where you are. Yeah, yeah. It's like I need to sort of I need to shut that stuff out for right. for a little bit and just focus on on what I'm working on. So there are up and down periods of work too. I mean, it sounds yeah. like you work a lot, but you do have periods in which you can be a little bit more less focused. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. What uh, What's coming up for you? I mean, you're having the show here at V1. Got the show here. Um, I think uh, I might be doing uh, like a big installation at uh, South by Southwest. Oh, cool. Yeah, that should be fun. I've never been there. Um, they're really pushing the culture now, I think. Yeah, I think so. Outside of, you know, it's not just music now. They're really working on bringing in a lot of different types yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems, it, 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 it seems like they're, they're doing some interesting things. And I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do yet, but I, I, I think it'll, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, so I mean that's that's probably just the the next thing next yeah. thing coming up and there's always that's another thing I'm terrible I forget what right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I'm, what's happening next but I know I know that's happening next because we've been emailing. Do you have somebody <laughs> who uh, helps you keep track of that shit? No, nope. <laughs> just fucking tell them right to you and they're like, so right the thing and you're like, oh right. I the mean, thing. So, yeah, some people, you know, it's like they 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 can't really you know deal with that stuff or they don't want to deal with. That. I don't I don't. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. Like I you know, it's a balance. It's, a balance it's like I can, I I know what I want to do and what I don't want to do. So you know, it's I'm I'm presented with with a variety of things all the time and some of it sounds interesting to me some of it doesn't you know and i do the things that i think are interesting like we you know we just did the uh the indigo fair blankets and and that was a very interesting collaboration you totally. know what i mean it's like what they they make you know good good quality things and and it's a medium that i'm unfamiliar with so is that the swedish company that makes that or is that made in america it's not a, no 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 it's uh it's here. It's not a. It's not American. Right. Yeah. Because I heard something. I think they're Swedish or something. Wes Lang made one too. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And they're great. They're great. You know. It's like they're. You know. They're. They're just open to whatever. And and we really just sort of you know played with a few different ideas and it was fun. Yeah. It's pretty cool to make a blanket. You know. Who would have thought? Yeah. 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 No. It's 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 cool. Is your wife an artist too? No. 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 She's she's not. I mean, she she also collects art and and she loves art as well, but she's not a, she's not an artist. No. It's probably a good thing, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's I don't know if if she was, it it could still be a good thing. It's, yeah. It's just a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's good. <laughs> Goodness is good. <laughs> yeah, we work we work well together. Yeah. All right. Well. I want to uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Okay, I hope it wasn't wasn't too too terrible and wasn't babbling. It was the opposite of that. You're very kind. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Richard Coleman telling you how it is. You gotta quit fucking around. You just gotta work. That's the whole point. And the, and the beauty of it is, if you work, you get to fuck around in such a glorious way afterwards. I know the guy works all the time, and that's what he says, but, uh, you know, I could tell. He gets out there, he hangs out, he sees people. There's time for everything. It's a matter of priorities, you know? So, uh, you know, you get some work done, you feel good about yourself. And then you go out and you fill the bucket with ideas, with uh, with people, with nonsense, probably a little bit of social boozing, climbing a couple trees, all that good stuff. There's time for it all. But, you know, you got to work hard. And if you're in art school, especially, you got to use that time wisely. You really do. It's the time, you know, it's like Naya said last week, it's the time in which you're allowed to just work and work and work without having to show, without having financial considerations, without having any other thing to think about other than making work, imagining an audience, 
and getting it out there. So, that is the moral of episode 20, hard ass work. Bam! So, thanks to Richard Coleman for taking time out of his busy schedule to talk to us. Also, thanks to V1 Gallery. We've been filling their space, interviewing their artists, and uh, generally making ourselves a nuisance. So, we want to thank them for letting us uh, use their office. And that about does it. Like I said, I am currently in Thailand, so uh, next week you'll hear how that went. It'll be interesting, regardless of what happens. Uh, it's going to be too hot. I can't stand that kind of hot-ass weather. Oy vey. We'll see what happens. Guys, be good. Thank you for listening. That's that. This episode was produced by Undergang Armchair once again. Intro and outro music by Heavy Links, our friends. Catch them on our About page. Today's interstitial music provided by Black Ant. You can catch a link to that on our show notes for today's episode. People, come find us on the net, undergang.net. Tell a friend. Find us on Twitter. Uh, The Undergang on Twitter. That is us. We're still thinking about Instagram. We'll see what happens. But maybe we'll start posting some more photos there on the old uh, Twitter. So, holler, holler, holler. Thanks for listening, guys. 20 episodes strong. We're feeling good about it. We're moving up. One day we'll even get new mics. Thanks for listening. Catch you guys next week.